Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm hoping to fix the one thing I don't like about my Player Plus Strat here, and that thing is the push-pull pot here is really hard to activate. Like, sometimes my hand just completely slips off of it. I really got to monkey grip it to, uh, to pull it out, or I have to dig my fingernails underneath <laughs> the edge of the knob there to get it. So I've been wanting to swap it out for some push-push knobs. Push-pull knobs, you have to pull it out. Push-push knobs, you click it and it pops out. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna throw on my preferred gauge of strings. So anyways, let's get started. This is the part where I just take strings off and unscrew the pick guard, right? This guitar is locking tuners. Which will make stringing it up extra easy will also be fun to finally get a peek at the guts of this guitar. I've been curious what's under the hood since I got it. I made a big mess of that. <laughs> How did I even manage all that? I've also had the thought that it could be fun to swap this pit guard for a different color. Suggest what color you think would look good down below. I've honestly thought putting an anodized gold pickguard on here, contrasting against that metallic green, that could look really pretty. I also think like a really nice tortoise pickguard would look good contrasted against the green. I like the mint. I do like the stock pickguard, but I always end up thinking about aesthetic variations. All right, here we go. Gut shots, my first peek into this guitar. Oh, interesting. There's some kind of fancy little chip here on the back of the volume control. What does that do? I've never seen that before. Everything looks really clean back here. I've just never seen that little chip before. Uh, interesting that the humbucker, it's set up kind of wide range style right now with two screws on that side but it looks like you could run it one screw if you did want to install this in a normal pit guard, it wouldn't be an issue. So that's nice to see. So if I did swap pit guards, I wouldn't have to drill in two screws to make it work. I'm trying to look for a marking on the push-pull pot to see uh, what resistance it is. These are 250K that I'm going to install. I was a little bit worried that there might be a 500K in, in here. I'm, I'm not smart with that sorts of stuff. Um, so if you guys think it needs to be a 500, let me know in the comments. Um, it's, it's the tone knob. Does it need to be 500? I almost never use the tone knob. All right, let's get into it. I think I'm gonna move all the wires over one by one and then swap this in. Or maybe I should pull this out and let it hang and put this in. I'm gonna do that. Leave it a little loose just in case I need to wiggle it around. I'm gonna start removing stuff. This is an easy one because there was already a very similar switch in there. So I just copy what was already done. I don't even have to think at all. Easy modification. Getting close, only two wires away. I want to know what is behind the uh, the noiseless single coil tech. Like there's 
Some interesting stuff going on here. There's the poles that go through the pickup. And there's a screw there, an extra pole there, an extra pole there, and then a screw there. Someone explain the technology to me behind these pickups. All right, it's all wired up. Pretty sure the way it's supposed to be. Let's tighten it up and test it before I string it. It takes the knob just fine, but it, uh, it does rest slightly higher. That shouldn't bug me. I could lower it by putting a spacer. Just gonna put an extra washer in there to space it slightly. It's not perfect, but it'll work. Just wanna make sure I didn't seriously mangle anything while I was in there. Make sure everything works. Yep, it works, let's string it up. I'm really excited about that. It's been hard to switch to the single coil setting on the bridge pickup, and you know that I want that. You know I love that bright, 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 twangy stuff. This has probably been the easiest mod I've ever done on video. I usually end up frustrated and backtracking and correcting mistakes I made. There's still time. There's still time for me to screw this up, right? I'm gonna use a set of Diderio XT 11s through 49. I've been using those on pretty much all my guitars for a while now. They're a coated string, which is good for me because most of my guitars hang up in the open air here in the garage and the strings do age over time, and the coating helps the guitar stay a little bit fresher. Quite a bit fresher, actually. <laughs> I'm always a little bit amazed at how new the strings will feel on some guitar that I haven't picked up in four months, even though it's been hanging here in the garage. Locking tuners make string changes so easy. You just put them in there, lock them down, and tune them up. I'm still uh, not completely convinced that locking tuners prevent tuning issues, though. I think they can help. I think if you have tuning issues, there's other things you should do first. And trying to swap in locking tuners. They don't lock your tuning. They just lock the string into the post. If you've been doing really bad post winds, I'm sure it can help you. But... You could just do your post winds better. And then you won't have tuning issues, right? There's all kinds of people out there with all kinds of unique theories on setting up and tuning guitars. And if you do anything different than the way they do it, they will get very upset on the internet and tell you very rude things very aggressively, which is fine. It's part of the entertainment of being a guitarist on the internet. It's funny the little things that, you know, people turn into some sort of gatekeeping exercise. Oh, you, you, you tune your guitar that way? Oh, you wrap your pegs that way? I have all these opinions about how bad you are. Don't listen to people like that. Take advice from people, explore those options, but, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Because everyone thinks they have the ultimate answer. And very rarely does anyone actually have the ultimate answer. There's a lot of different ways to do things. Getting a phone call. Scam Likely, my old friend. I'll call him back later. from Echo, Oregon. I remember when he moved there to Echo, Oregon, and I said, 
Echo, Oregon, scam. I've never even heard of that place. Why are you moving to some place I've never even heard of? And he was like, I don't know, man. I just got to follow my dreams to like research your car's extended warranty. So he's out there living the dream, researching my car's extended warranty. All right, it's tuner time. It works. That turned out great. I'm really excited about that. Just being able to push really quickly and toggle between humbucker and single. Yeah, that's what this guitar needed. That was the only thing about this guitar that I haven't liked at all. I love the rest of this guitar. It's been crazy tuning stable. No matter how much I abuse that wiggle stick, it seems to come back in tune pretty much most of the time. I'd say like nine and a half times out of 10. And it handles, you know, like light, fluttery, surfy stuff just fine, too. I never have an issue with that. Uh, I like the sound of the pickups. I love the feel of the neck. The details are there, but just that one thing. I don't know why they put in a push-pull to begin with. Even right now, it's, it's pretty stiff to push-pull that. They put a push-push on the Ampro 2 Jazzmaster that I have. They need to adopt the push pushes on all their guitars that have coil cuts because the push pull just, it really doesn't work with the fender knob. So glad I did that. I'll have a link down below for the switch that I used. I have an extra one here. I don't know what I'll put this on. I'll put it on something though. I'll also have a link for uh, a few things that I use. Uh, my soldering iron here. You might've seen me using the rocket sockets. I'll find the link for those. These are great. If you're working on guitars or pedals or something like that, they're soft plastic, not soft like rubber, but you know, they're not a hard metal tool that's gonna scrape up anything you're working on. And other than that, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude, nasty comments, support us on Patreon, and stay grounded. Bye everybody.